Hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Front Mission. And as I promised, uh, this time we are going to be continuing the OCU campaign from where we left off way, way back. Uh, so we will actually go ahead and uh, get started with that right exactly where we left off. So we had some weird uh, janky emulation stuff happen there, but basically um, we are a year after what happened um, in the Larkus district, and that puts us just after the fall of uh, Freedom City, and then finally the uh, destruction of Lark Valley. Um, we are now in our next year, actually. It's been a while even since then. Um, and we get to see what's been happening with Royd um, since his rather unfortunate uh, involvement in the Larkus incident where he uh, lost his fiance and was uh, publicly humiliated for his responsibility in setting off the war. Alright, um, so let's do this, uh, we'll start with a few missiles, or a missile. That does that. So yeah, the OCU military is losing badly. The OCU GDF is getting its head handed to it by the USN military. And they've resorted to hiring mercenaries to help uh, fight the USN. So um, Clyde, or sorry, uh, Royd, uh, Roy Clive is going to be rehired by the OCU, but as a mercenary this time, instead of as a regular soldier. Alright, um, so we have signed up with the Canyon Crows, we're going to lead the Canyon Crows um, under Olsen, and uh, just the prospect of getting revenge for Karen's death and finding the man who killed her uh, is enough to get uh, Royd interested in Olsen's proposition. Okay. 
So we'll just do a little bit of quick setup here. Um, preparation for the second mission of the campaign. Uh, okay, so we can get the Zenith. Might as well just go Thank all you. Zenith. Thank you. Thank you. Get back into the Vons era that we were used to from um, our days in the recon. Military recon. Um, so this is a rifle. And that's a machine gun. Five times two. Okay, let's just take a quick look here at what our current machine gun is able to do. I think we have the Raptor equipped right now. This is one of the major um, UI issues with this game, that you have to switch between the shop menu and the setup menu. Okay, so four times three, equates to 12 damage versus 10 damage. Uh, I think we'll stick with what we got. All right, um, yeah, we should just check to see if we have any items. got some items. So I think we're okay. Um, so we're the Canyon Crows. Last time we were Silver Lynxes. Let's do something a little bit different. Uh, we are Crows, so we should be black, of course. Uh, black and purple. That's a weird one. That's kind of cool. I like that color. Black and red would be ideal, but I don't think that is an option. No. Okay, you know what? I think we're gonna go with this green. It's pretty, pretty nice looking. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, now I'm just going to do a save state. Right, so I have to make sure. Okay, 6th of July, and that is the most advanced file. Okay, just have to make sure I don't overwrite the critical file from the USN campaign that, uh, you know, we need in order to continue once uh, we end up back in that situation. All right, um, so we have outfitted our unit. Uh, we don't need to go here, no, we need to go to the bar. Kevin is coming. Actually, Hector is coming. He'd be the one hanging out in this bar. Nobody has anything particularly interesting to say. Um, you know, you have to remember that this is where the original game started, so um, it's not like we're actually in the middle of things. Um, as far as that goes, we're, we're only in the middle of things in terms of how the overall chronology goes. Are we all set to go? Yes, we are set to go. Sure. Yuji's back. Interestingly, you know, uh, front mission is 
maybe the only Jap Japanese developed Squaresoft RPG with a non-Japanese protagonist. Yeah, it's like set in the real world. Of course there's Parasite Eve, but that's not really an RPG. Hmm. But the important thing I guess to note is that there's a lot of front mission games and hardly any Japanese protagonists. In fact, the only game in the main series that has a Japanese protagonist is um, Front Mission 3, which is also the, you know, uh, sort of most anime of all of the Front Mission games. Um, this game, the two protagonists are Australian and American. And then uh, Front Mission 2, you have some Australians. There's a lot of protagonists in that game. But there's one Japanese protagonist, but like Bangladeshis, um, those are the main groups that they come from, yeah. And then uh, Front Mission 3 is Japanese. Front Mission 4, you have a um, American and a uh, French protagonist. Um, and then in Front Mission 5, you have an American protagonist. So very little Japanese representation. Um, and... Uh, you know, Ryuji is, is the only sort of like main uh, character in this OCU campaign that's from Japan. Um, and that goes for the USN campaign too, because of course Japan is part of the um, OCU, not the USN. Uh, but, but the point of that was that um, the game was designed to appeal to a foreign audience. Uh, maybe you could say that the mechanics are too obtuse and that makes it sort of like limited to a Japanese audience, but what the creators envisioned was that this would be a game that would have international appeal, um, and part of the reason why there are so few Japanese protagonists in these games is because it was always created with that sort of mentality, and it was only, um because this game or these games were never properly marketed or distributed or localized for the uh, overseas market um, that it it didn't really get uh, it wasn't it didn't really become what the creators wanted it to become you know um, so that's that's an aside <laughs> it's a long aside but uh, here's the UG um, he will as we'll see he is um, actually quite a significant character um, in this world. And, yes, she is our adjutant, or, well, a little bit more than our adjutant, maybe. She's our second in command. So we're up to three. And in fact, uh, you do get a lot more characters uh, in your unit in this campaign than you do in the USN campaign. And I always mix up Keith and JJ. <laughs> always get them mixed up because they're just like, they're, you know, kind of just, you get them at the same time and they're both these like tough guy mercenaries. So they're in a pinch, we're gonna come save them. saw my sort of warm-up preview stream of this game um, from earlier in the year. You've seen me do this mission before, actually. Um, but we'll do it again. Okay. 
Okay, so we want to avoid getting our characters on the water when possible, because as you can see it has 0% cover and that is bad. Uh, 8%. These woods have 20% cover, which is quite good, but um, realistically we're probably not going to be engaging the enemy uh, in that kind of terrain. We're going to have to cross the river here. And our skills are gone! We're back to the very beginning. Look at those pitiful amounts of life. Okay. So this is JJ attacking, I believe. Yes, <laughs> I didn't get them mixed up. Okay, one of them's down. Oh, and you can see our sweet crest here. In fact, the Canyon Crows are arguably, well, at least they'll turn out to be more formidable than the Silver Lynxes. And we got a Raptor machine gun. The Canyon Crows mean business. So this is Keith, if I'm not mistaken, and we can get him to take out this guy. Maybe I should have punched him. Oh, we're good. Okay, good, good, good. Let's move on to the land and attack with Roid. I like that green in the battles, but when you look at it on the map, it looks totally different. And Yuji doesn't really have much choice, so we're going to put him in the river here. Also sporting a rifle. out his legs something okay it's another part some more experience attack from here because uh, this guy is zero percent cover an interesting situation. How are you? You are fine on life. Uh, the, Yuji's, uh, Vonzer's name is Ryo, um, and that, I believe, means lightning god in Japanese. Um, since he is Japanese, he's a Japanese name for his Vonzer. Um, Natalie, of course, is a very girly name for her Vonzer. <laughs> Primrose. a missile on that guy because he's no weapons left so I'm just going to maybe move down here for the moment and attack okay Keith does it it's the job done and we'll move JJ up there and let's heal up our arm So this is the commander? Yeah, commander has a missile launcher in this map. OK, 
Okay, let's get Yuji back in there. Actually, this map is one of the more tactically interesting maps in the entire game because of the fact that you start surrounded and there's a lot of um, verticality and there's also this question of like the quality of terrain that you're fighting on it varies quite a bit. Um, and the center of the map is taken up by the river, which you do have to cross here and there. So, um, Compared to a lot of maps in the game, this one is fairly, um, I mean, it's not difficult, but it, it is at least tactically interesting. Um, so who's moving? Okay, what are we gonna do here? You can move there and attack the commander. Oh, miss. And... How are you doing for life? You are in kind of rough shape, so let's heal up. Uh, you can attack. If really close there to avoiding getting any damage. Um, guy is a missile launcher, so he won't come up and attack us. Maybe. Uh, if he would come up and attack us, it would be really advantageous because um, we do have terrain advantage. Um, we do get cover here, and he does not. Let's see, how are we on life? Not that bad on life. You know what? We're going to go engage. At least we got a hit in. And at least we're on equal cover. That does uh, help quite a bit. Should remember that Royd also has missiles. Just used to um, going for the melee, or sorry, for the short attacks uh, because. Um, Because that's what we were doing at the end, like the last section of the USN campaign we were in, because, you know, we really need to level up those short skills in order to get um, the switch and so on that we wanted. Okay, do G. All right, well, that's more experience for Natalie. Another miss, despite the terrain disadvantage he's at. Um, right, so how are we doing? More importantly, how is he doing? take multiple attacks in this round, so we should have moved. Should have moved on to the land there. He attacked uh, Royd anyway. Oh, nice. Nicely done, JJ. Chaff? Yeah. So no shooting missiles at the commander this round. Don't do it. It won't do anything. It's a complete waste. You're still okay. Uh, okay. Go 
to go for the punch. As you can see at this level, it, it's still fairly effective as a t an attack. Um, okay, so let's try to kill this guy with Roid. Nope. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. The OCU is never this good. Well, we used to be OCU troops, so that's not technically true. Canyon Crow sure did kick our ass when we were the Silver Lynxes, in any case. I mean, we didn't really have a proper fight, but... Okay, we're out of missiles, so... Let's just engage, I guess. useless but um, more experience again so we're gonna move you uh, how many enemies do we have over here so just one We can finally get over here. Attack from the land. This is the point where you want a machine gunner. So let's go up and kill this guy. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Big time experience. guys out of the contention. And... Doesn't matter because this guy has no... Arms left! There we go. Finally finished him off. And a level for UG. Mm. Whatever. This is enough to kill this guy.
Level for Roid. Should be okay. Join us, Jerry Aska. So we got uh, Keith and JJ on our team bring us up to five pilots. Gonna go straight to New Milgan. Don't see any particular reason to go back to Berindon. Got that different uh, city music. One of the better tracks on this OST, I think. Okay, so uh, that really does it for our first sort of real episode in the OCU campaign. I'm going to be doing another couple of these tonight, um, but I'll just be doing the... Um, actually, you know what? I should probably do the setup stuff. No, okay, it's all right. I will go, um, go ahead and do the setup stuff in between episodes. So I will see you next time.